Kazaki show. I'm the Trev. It's too sweet. Anyway. Getting back to retired numbers. And this one, and probably every one after that, with the exception of a few, I'm sure, actually require paper. I know. I know. There's computers that do that kind of thing for you, right? But sorry, I'm, I'm old school. I believe on the hands-on approach. That's just me. But anyway, today we're talking about the first number retired in Calgary. And I'm not going to lie. When I think Lanny McDonald, I think this great big orange mustache on his face. And while that is impressive in itself and probably deserves a video of its own, I'm not here to talk about Lanny McDonald's mustache. I'm sorry. I'll do that when I'm ready to talk about Brent Burns' beard, or Joe Thornton's beard for that matter, but today I'm talking about his number nine that's hanging up in the rafters of the saddle dome. So, let's talk about it. So McDonald's career with the Flames began on November 25th, 1981. After being traded to Calgary from Colorado, along with the 1983 fourth round pick, which if you follow the tree enough, doesn't go to Colorado or New Jersey, ends up going to the Islanders, but I don't do trade trees, I'm sorry. <laughs> In exchange for Bob McMillan and Don Lever. Now, ironically enough, the night before said trade, the Rockies had lost 9-2 to two to the same Flames. So I don't know if it was more of a case of embarrassment, like, oh, we can't keep a superstar like Lanny on our team, here you go, but Story goes, once the, Pro the Rockies' plane landed in Winnipeg, McDonald was told about the trade, and then told to go back to Calgary. And initially, McDonald was angered by the trade, more so insulted that a last place team in the league gave up on a player like him. And also feeling a bit of the pressure of having to replace two of the local favorites in McMillan and Lever. But nonetheless, he made his debut with the Flames on November 26th in what turned out to be a 7-1 Flames win. And one could say that the mood severely changed. He was embraced by the Calgary Flames fans and became a, pretty much the face of the franchise at that point. He hadn't even dipped his hand into the community yet. He just started playing on the team. He was Southern Alberta born, so it wasn't foreign territory for a guy like him. But he quickly established himself as a fan favorite in Calgary. And although it took him seven games to score his first goals as a Flame, he managed to add 34 while playing with the Flames that season for a combined total of 40, which led the team in goals and helped the Flames finish to a third place finish in the division, which got them a date with Vancouver in the playoffs. But back to the regular season. He finished with a combined total of 82 points, but really only managed one assist in three playoff games. So while things were starting to look up for Calgary, it looked more or less like the same product they had in Atlanta with the Flames there, you know, good regular season success, but Playoff success, something hard to come by. But nonetheless, things were looking up. I promise you that. For 1982-83, as a nice little encore, McDonald got to start the season and finish the season as a flame. He actually didn't go anywhere past this point. He finished his career in Calgary. But McDonald had a neat little feed into that year's scoring race. As he was keeping pace with some Gretzky kid in Edmonton, the whole season through, as far as goal scoring was concerned. By the All-Star break, McDonald had two more goals than Gretzky did. How many of you guys can say that? McDonald had 47 at the All-Star break. Gretzky had 45. So they kept up really, really well. And although McDonald did finish second at the end of the season in goal scoring, five behind Gretzky, 71. The 66 that he did score still, to this day, stand as a Flames team record for most goals in the season. But 66, that's fairly, very impressive. Needless to say, that was definitely a career high in goals for Lanny McDonald. But 
He also got to play in the 1983 All-Star Game that year. And finished the season with a combined 98 points, which was good for second in scoring. Not good enough to crack the top 10, because you still had 10 plus 100 point scores that season. The Flames overall finished second in the Smythe Division, which again was good enough for the playoffs. Which again meant they eliminated the Vancouver Canucks in the division semifinals and then lost two others in the division finals. Such was the case of playing in the Smythe Division, but. He did manage seven points in seven playoff games, which is better than one point in three games, wouldn't you agree? But for the amazing season McDonald had, he was not only voted second NHL All-Star team for the second time in his career, he was also awarded the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy for perseverance and dedication to hockey. So good to know that he's getting appreciated on all things, right? Now for 83-84, following the trade of Phil Russell, McDonald's was named co-captain of the team along with Doug Reisbrow, which was a role he'd hold until he retired. The Flames were also moving from the very, very tiny and very, very dilapidated Stampede Corral to the brand new $100 million Olympic Saddle Dome, which we now know as the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, which will eventually be a former home to the Flames, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there, I'm sure. And while history has it down as a 4-3 loss in the regular season opener at the Olympic Saddle Dome, it also has that Lanny McDonald scored the first Flames goal in history for the regular season for the Calgary Flames in the brand new Olympic Saddle Dome. So that's a nice little feat to have under your belt, wouldn't you think? Also of note for this season, on December 21st, 1983, McDonald became the 21st player in NHL history to score 400 goals against the LA Kings. Now initially, this is the weird part about this whole thing, initially, he was credited with scoring it in the Flames' previous game against the Winnipeg Jets. But upon reviewing the play himself, McDonald appealed to the league and had them credit his teammate Eddie Beers for the goal as he had tipped in the goal, or tipped in the shot McDonald took to the net. So that technically wasn't McDonald's 400th. His 400th came against Los Angeles. Class act. Class act. I, I imagine there's a lot of guys who are like, yeah, no, I'll just take it. It's another goal. Goes in my stats. Why not, right? He also played in his fourth and final All-Star game this season. And in 1984, despite missing 15 games... Due to injury, McDonald finished with 66 points. So he had as many points as he had goals the season before. Huge, well not huge, but starting to go down now. But it was still good enough for third on the Flames in team scoring. So not a bad thing. The team itself finished second in the Smythe and again beat the Canucks. Again. And again, lost two others. Again. We all finished the playoffs with 13 points in 11 playoff games. For 80-45, McDonald McDonald's missed the start of the season. Again, due to injury. And he was only limited to 43 games. He did manage 19 goals and 18 assists for 37 points. So better get something out of the time you're given. Right? I mean... To go from that many points to that few, it sucks. It definitely probably hurts the egos and all that stuff, but the body can only handle so much, right? The Flames, however, saw a partial dip in their standings as well, going from second to third in the Smythe, and saw themselves eliminated by the Winnipeg Jets. McDonald had no points in one playoff game. Now with 85-86 coming up, the question of could McDonald keep going with injuries and age starting to catch up started becoming a thing. So he made a mission to himself to play a full 80-game schedule. At the time, it was 80 games. 
And despite dislocating his thumb in preseason and dealing with lower body injuries during the season, he did manage to play full 80 games, unfortunately, for the last time. Finishing second in team scoring with 71 points, one point behind Dan Quinn. Flames themselves finished second again in the Smite division. Which meant a date with the Winnipeg Jets, not the Vancouver Canucks this time. But they beat in three straight before going to face the Oilers. Which either meant you were going to lose or you are going to seven. And this one went seven. You, Oilers fans might know where I'm going with this. They might not. But I know where I'm going with this. <laughs> it's game seven. Puck's on the line and some rookie rookie defenseman named Steve Smith is getting pressured by McDonald in the back end. And yeah, bad timing led to the Flames eliminating the Oilers and punching a date with St. Louis in the Campbell Conference Finals. Which went the whole distance as well. And all seven games before the Flames took out the Blues. And for the first time, not just in Lanny McDonald's career, but in the Flames franchise history, they're going to the Stanley Cup. And not only that, they're going to play the Montreal Canadiens. An all-Canadian showdown. And I wished I could say the Flames won the Cup this year. But they didn't. They were riding some hot no hot rookie goalie named Patrick Waugh. And in five games, the Canadians won their 23rd Cup. McDonald finished the playoffs with 18 points in 22 games. Unfortunately, two separate knee injuries would limit McDonald to 58 games in 86-87. But he did manage 26 points in 58 games. So it's something. But no points in five playoff games. But he did manage to play his 1,000th game during the 86-87 season. So that's one milestone out of the way. 87-88 was a good season for the Flames, who ended up winning the President's Trophy for the best record in the NHL. For McDonald, though, he had only managed 23 points in 60 games. So now we're getting to career lows instead of career highs. As well, four, as well as four points in nine playoff games. So, yeah, age, injury. They might be starting to catch up with him, but maybe they're starting to catch up with the Flames too. Despite his limited production, though, he was the first player in the NHL to win the King Clancy Memorial Trophy, which is awarded to a player who best exemplifies leadership qualities on and off the ice. And, yeah, again, this goes back to McDonald being heavy-handed in the community. He's there. Always a presence, always was. So not an, uh, not an undeserving recognition. It's going into 88, 89. I think deep down he knew, even if no one else knew, or maybe they didn't know and they didn't want to be the one to tell him, this is probably it for him. This is probably his last chance at winning a cup. Despite the fact he only managed 18 points in 51 games, there's two important things to knock off that career bucket list. He managed to do them both. On March 7th, 1989, he scored his 500th, or sorry, his 100th, 1,000th career point on a wraparound goal against Bob Asenza and the Winnipeg Jets in a 9-5 victory. 14 days later, or two weeks to be exact, <laughs> he scored his 500th and final goal of his NHL career in pretty similar fashion against Mark Fitzpatrick and the New York Islanders. The Flames finished the season with another President's Trophy. And for once, don't have to play the Oilers in the playoffs. Let's go somewhere. <laughs> they got seven games out of Vancouver before sweeping the team that eliminated the Oilers. Ironically enough, the LA Kings. And after taking out the Blackhawks in five, 
the Flames are once again going to the Stanley Cup Final. And once again, playing the Montreal Canadiens. The unique twist here is after playing in Games 1 and 2, Flames coach Terry Crisp had McDonald's sit for Game 3, 4, and 5. No. Bitter sweet irony or coach's caution, I don't know. We started him again for Game 6. And this move paid dividends as midway through the, through the game, after serving a penalty, McDonald joined Hoken Lube and Joe Neuendijk on a three-on-one rush. Lube passed the puck to Neuendijk, and Neuendijk saw McDonald streaking on the right side. Passed the puck to McDonald, and McDonald made no mistake, no mistake on it. That puck went over Patrick Waugh's glove and in the net for a 2-1 Calgary game. A couple more goals later, and that would be McDonald's last professional goal. After all was said and done, the Flames defeated the Montreal Canadiens to win the 1989 Stanley Cup in six games. And being one of the co-captains, McDonald was presented with the cup and the first of the team to skate around with it. It was also the first time that any Montreal Canadiens team in any form or any kind of condition in history was ever defeated on Montreal Forum ice for the Cup. McDonald, McDonald finished with four points in 14 playoff games, and although of those four points, one was a goal, and that was it. So as mentioned, the 88-89 season was his last. As he made that official on August 28th, 1989, finally giving his body the rest it needed. And on March 17th, 1990, McDonald became the first Calgary Flame to have his number retired. So, again, not undeserving. Now let's have a quick recap. Of his 1,111 games played in the NHL, 492 of them were with Calgary. Of his 500 goals, 215 were there. Of his 506 assists, 191 were there, and of his 1,006 points, 406 were as a flame. As for his playoff stats with Calgary, 72 games, 24 goals, 24 assists, 48 points. While he was there, second team All Star in 1983, Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy in 1983, King Clancy Memorial Trophy in 1988. Stanley Cup in 1989, and the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1992. So, damn. Some pretty good accomplishments there. So I guess in a lot of ways, a guy like McDonald on your team, not just for your team, but for your community's sake as well, is a great thing to pick up. Ironically enough, before the trade was made for him, Cliff Fletcher was trying to do the same thing while he was in Atlanta, trying to get him out of Toronto. And when he finally got him out of, Cal out of Colorado, it helped the franchise big time. It helped them get over, not just in Calgary, but shake the image of Atlanta as well. And it gave the Flames a solid chance of contending for a playoff spot every year. The fact that he managed a lot of milestones, a lot of career firsts, a lot of organizational firsts only helped feed the legend that is Lanny McDonald for the Calgary Flames. But that was a brief discussion of the number nine in Calgary. So there's another one of Trans Hockey Shows. I want to thank you for tuning in, especially if you've made it this far. I honestly didn't think this was going to take 20 minutes plus of your time, but I'm glad you're here if you're still here at this point. I can only imagine if this one was 20 minutes and it was only seven seasons. What are some of the other ones going to be like? What did I sign up for? <laughs> but anyway, if you're still here, give that a like. If you want, if you haven't yet, 
hit that subscribe button. We're 15 away from 100. And subscribe makes you feel good. And you know you want to. I know you want to. Let's do it up. All my socials, they're in the description down below. Moving forward with retired numbers. I'm at a debate whether I want to finish the team off or start a team. And there's one team I have in mind that definitely needs to start. So, if, you, if you're... If you have an idea of what I'm talking about, feel free to put it in. If you want to make, if you want to help my decision make making bit easier by finish or start, let me know. But either way, in the meantime, and in between time, be looking for more viewers from Trev. Later.